When you're marking your centric stops, you should make sure that the articulator is locked in the hinge position. For checking your eccentric excursions, you need to make sure that the locks on both sides of the articulator are removed. Normally I want to start my excursions from the hinge position, so I will open the articulator slightly and pull the incisal pin forward to make sure I start in that hinge position, let it down, and then I'm going to start to make one of my lateral excursions. For most people, you're going to find it's easier to do one excursion at a time, but you should have paper arcing both on the working side, that's the side that the mandible is moving towards, and also on the balancing side. That way you'll be able to see any working contacts you have over here, and on the opposite side you'll be able to see if there's any balancing contacts over here. First we'll mark those lateral excursions, then if we have to, we'll go back and if we've wiped out our centric stops, we'll mark those again. Let's talk about the goals of our adjustment for a lingualized occlusion. First of all, you want an even distribution of contacts on all of the teeth, not just the posterior teeth like the centric stops, but in protrusive and lateral excursions, you should start to see some red marks on the incisal edges of the anterior teeth. Also, you should make sure that you have no maxillary buccal contacts. If we take a look up here in the maxilla, you can see that our only contacts are indeed on the lingual cusps. When the patient goes into an excursion, the anterior teeth should not preclude contact of the posterior teeth. You can see here from a lingual view that we're keeping contacts on both sides of the arch as we move into excursions. Let's take a look more closely at the mandibular markings here. These are working contacts. Remember our mnemonic, inner inclines of functional cusp. In the mandible, functional cusp or centric stop is the buccal cusp. So if we have a contact between where the cuspal tip is here and inside that, inside the cusp tip towards the central fossa, if we see a red line there, that will be a balancing contact. This balancing contact here was made when this cusp over here was moving in this direction here. Mandible was moving in this direction. Maxillary lingual cusp in reference to that is moving lingually. These are our working contacts and this is the balancing contact made at the same time. A couple of principles are that our working and our balancing contact should be lines, like you see here. Like you see here. The balancing contact should also be lines, not dots. We're trying to get one working and one balancing contact on each tooth. You can see we've done pretty well here. May not be a balancing contact on this tooth over here, but overall things look pretty good. One of our principles is that the balancing contacts should never be heavier than the working contacts. Here are our working contacts as the mandible moves this way. The corresponding balancing contacts are over here. They're lighter than our working contacts. That's good. Our final goal for our excursive contacts is that when we make those movements in excursions, it shouldn't be bumpy or jumpy. You can see here that my articulator moves very smoothly into different excursions. Note the difference with this unadjusted occlusion. You can see it's jumping here, it's a little bit bumpy here, you can almost hear it jumping over some of the cusps. We're going to smooth those out with our excursive adjustments. You get those jumps and bumps we were talking about when you don't have nice smooth lines on all of the teeth. You can see over here this tooth has no contact in working or in balancing. This one has a good working contact and in fact it's the only working contact on this side. It's probably causing a jump. It's causing the maxillary lingual cusp to come up and jump over this cusp here and none of these other cusps are touching. The balancing contact here, again it's only on this one tooth. Over on this side here, remember this is an inner incline of a functional cusp, so this is the balancing contact that corresponds to this working contact over here. Let's start by lightening up some of these contacts so we start to get the working and balancing contacts on all of our posterior teeth. As we said, this balancing contact is the only one on this side. We're going to remove that so that we can establish other balancing contacts. We might have a little one over here. It's not a line yet. It's a dot. Remember, we want lines, not dots. Let's get rid of that one there. 
try and maintain your centric stops. On the opposite side, you can see something we really don't want, and that's contact on this buckle cusp. We should not have contact in that area. So we're going to remove that mandibular buckle contact. Looking at our working contacts, we only have one over here. We're going to remove that so we can pick up some of the contacts on the other teeth. And at this point, we have no mandibular anterior uh, tooth contact at all. That should change as we adjust these contacts. In the maxilla, you can see we've got a balancing contact over here. Here's our centric stop. Anything internal to that cusp tip is an inner incline. Anything outside of that cusp tip is an external incline. This inner incline is a balancing contact and it's heavy. So we're going to remove that contact and lighten it up. On this tooth here on the second molar, you can see we've got a little bit trying to become uh, a balancing contact. We're going to lighten that up just on the incline. We're not going to adjust where our cusp tip is for our centric stop. Remember we said we hardly saw any contacts in the mandible. If we take a look in our maxilla, we can actually see we've got a very light one starting here. We want more to pick up, so we're going to lighten that up so the other ones will come into contact. And you can see on our canine tooth here, we've actually got a very, very heavy contact. That's the one that was hitting the, the, the mandibular buccal premolar cusp before. We're going to adjust that. We're going to lighten it up quite a bit, because that will make a big difference on how we contact. When you're adjusting on the canine, keep taking a look from the facial surface to make sure you don't accidentally change the shape of the canine tooth so that it doesn't look very good. Make sure that you keep the natural contours so you keep the aesthetics that you've planned. We've only made one adjustment, but already in lateral excursions, you can see that's not jumping quite as much as it did. We still have some problems in protrusion. You can see it jumping and I can feel it clicking as I do that but in the lateral excursion it's starting to smooth up. We'll mark those again in lateral excursions and see how things look. We've actually lost a little bit of our working contact back here. Remember that was heavy. So we're probably looking at something on the balancing side that's keeping us from establishing our working contacts over here. And when I look, this is the heaviest contact that I see. It's on a buccal cusp and it's on the inner incline of that buccal cusp that's a really heavy balancing contact. Our principle is balancing contacts never as heavy as the working contacts. We'll remove that. We've lightened up the balancing contacts, but you can still see over here we've got a little bit of a balancing contact. We want to make sure that's light enough till we start to get better working contacts over here. You can see we've also snuck in another buckle contact here. We don't want that. We'll get rid of it. Working contact back here is probably a little bit heavy, but it's just a little bit of a dot. We're probably still going to have to work on our balancing contacts a little bit more before we establish really good working contacts. In the maxilla, you should be able to start to take a look at things and assess what you need to eliminate or lighten in order to get that. Remember we said we don't ever want to have a buckle contact out here. This is too heavy. We need to adjust that. Also, we're starting to get some cusp tip action here on these buccal cusps. Again, we're talking a lingualized occlusion. It should look more like this side over here where we have no buccal contacts at all. You can see we've got a heavy balancing contact over here. We'll probably lighten that incline as well. Let's get rid of those buccal contacts first. Also note that we're starting to just pick up some anterior contacts. That's good. We might be a little bit heavy still on our canine here. We'll adjust that. And these again are our balancing contacts. We don't want to take off from our centric stop, so we'll mark that centric stop again. That looks like our mark there. Let's just check that on the articulator before we wipe it out. Remember, we want to preserve those centric stops that we spent a good amount of time checking and adjusting. So this is indeed, the black mark here is indeed my centric stop. This is the inner incline of the cusp. That's a balancing contact. Our working contacts aren't heavy enough yet, so we're going to adjust those so we re-establish our working contacts. In between marking, I'll take the paper out and I'll use a little bit of 
to blow off any loose articulator paper markings so it doesn't get into my wax up. I'll keep adjusting the excursions that I'm working on until I see the lines that I want, until things are really nice and smooth. In this particular case, I'm starting to establish some really nice balancing contacts. Unfortunately, I've still got a one really heavy working contact here that's not allowing the rest of my working teeth, working cuts, to contact. So I'll lighten both the balancing and the working till I establish those. If I take a look in excursions on the articulator and I see that those cusps are a long ways from touching, I may actually get the wax instruments out and move those again. That's getting really nice and smooth now. I can see I've got some articulating paper markings on my teeth there. I'm going to clean those off with a clean piece of gauze so I don't dirty up my wax up. You can see in the maxillary arch I've got some balancing contacts over here and I've got some working contacts out here. Unfortunately, these working contacts are mostly on my buckle cusps. I'm going to eliminate those. I want those to stay on my lingual cusps. You can also see I'm starting to gain a heavy contact on my incisor, so I'll lighten that up. But again, I'll take a look from the facial to make sure I don't destroy the appearance of that tooth as I'm adjusting. In the mandibular arch, I'm getting rid of those buccal contacts. For a lingualized occlusion, we don't want those on the working side. We want the working contacts on the internal surface there, on the inner incline to the non-functional cut. I'm pretty close to finishing up now. You can see I've got my working contact here, working contacts here, probably a little bit light here. I've still got these nice lines, my balancing contacts over here, and you can also start to see that I'm picking up these anterior teeth touching. Then what I'm going to do is start to make my excursions to the opposite side and do the exact same thing that I've done on this side. When I'm done, when I move my teeth into excursions, it should be nice and smooth and you should see interdigitation. You should make sure that the buccal cusps are not touching. If you take a look from underneath here, you can see I've still got a little bit of a gap there. So most of my contacts are on my lingual cusps. That's where they should be.